Coming out of high school, this guy broke Ezekiel Elliott's track records. He was also compared to Ted Ginn. He had all the hype in the world, and his original plan was to go to school and become a first round pick. Well, it did not work out the way he expected it to. After showing some flash, he eventually got buried on the depth chart, and the question was asked, is his star career pretty much already over? He had fallen off draft boards, and everyone had forgotten about him. He would decide to transfer, and he would ultimately save his career. In today's video, we're going to take a look at a former blue chip prospect who had fallen off the NFL's radar, his career was falling apart, and then found a way to boost it all back. He has become a huge part of the Alabama offense and has blossomed into a star for quarterback Bryce Young. We're going to go through his entire story, what happened in his career so far, and why I think he could potentially be a first round pick in the future. But right before we get into that, nearly 80% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel, and we're gonna need your help to get that number up. So be sure to hit that subscribe button, smash that like button for the algorithm, and let me know another topic I could do next. Now, let's get started. You're probably wondering who am I talking about, and the subject of today's video is former Ohio State and current Alabama wide receiver, Jamison Williams. But in order to understand why he was compared to Ezekiel Elliott and Ted Ginn, we need to go back in time. His parents were track stars, and his entire family would find stardom on the track. He was born and raised in St. Louis, Missouri, and was always a star athlete. He started to make a name for himself in fourth grade, but he eventually became big in another sport. He blossomed into a young star at Cardinal Ritter Prep High School, and quickly put his name on the recruiting radar. As a junior, he caught 36 passes for 1,062 yards and 15 touchdowns, and he also returned seven punts for three touchdowns and played defensive back. He was a big deal, and Williams blew up on the recruiting scene. He would trim his list of schools to Ohio State, Alabama, Nebraska, Oregon, and UCLA, and would eventually commit to Ohio State. He had 44 offers to choose from, but he had a reason for choosing the Buckeyes. He said, quote, Ohio State felt like home to me. I felt at home the most out of the top five schools I put out. It took me a while, but that's the school that stood out for me. But there would be a curveball, as OSU was investigated. As they looked into Urban Meyer's handling of an assault case, Williams decided to look at his other options. But eventually Meyer was given that three-game suspension, and Williams went with his original choice, but his father wanted him to go elsewhere. He wanted him to go to Alabama. His dad said, quote, Saban was never one of those guys pulling Jamison's chain. When we sat in his office, he was one of the only coaches who I heard criticize Jamison and critique what he needed to work on to be a great player. Honestly, I just felt Jamison fit their mold. Instead of going to Alabama, he was the third St. Louis wide receiver to go to the Buckeyes, as both Cameron Babb and Cameron Brown had also become Buckeyes in the last few recruiting classes. Jamison was an All-State football player and track star, and was expected to play right away for Ohio State. Jamison said, quote, I feel like I've been a lot more focused and got a whole lot better in everything, in the classroom and on the field. I feel like it'll all come together soon and show during the season. Wide receivers coach Brian Hartline also had this to say about Jamison. Quote, he already has the physicality that a lot of receivers don't have. He loves the contact piece. He's always making sure that his speed and blocking are under control, and then he operates with purpose. But just like his family, he was also a track star. During his junior year, he was the number one hurdler in the state, but he clipped the first hurdle and fell on his face. This was embarrassing, but he came back his senior year and broke the record that was held by Ezekiel Elliott. And not only was he a track superstar, but he was also a big-time football prospect. According to 24-7 Sports, Jameson Williams was a four-star recruit, the number one player in the state of Missouri, the number 13 wide receiver, and the 82nd best player in the class of 2019. He was compared to Ted Ginn coming into Ohio State, and Ohio State did have some attrition at the wide receiver spot, but it didn't quite work out as well as expected for Jameson. In 2019, Justin Fields and Ryan Day were the newfound faces of Ohio State football, and Jamison Williams got a chance to play a little bit. He'd play in his first game against Miami of Ohio, and he'd catch two passes for 74 yards and a touchdown. He wouldn't appear in any other game until November when they played against Maryland, and in a blowout, Williams caught four passes for 38 yards. Those were the only two games he would appear in, and he would finish the season with six catches for 112 yards and a touchdown. He didn't quite live up to expectations, but at the same time, it didn't seem like he was getting a lot of playing time compared to the other guys. This would all really show in 2020. He caught his first pass of the season against Nebraska, and then in a road win over Penn State, he had two catches for 23 yards. He caught a touchdown against Rutgers and a pass in their win over number 9 Indiana, but the regular season didn't go too well for him. Against number 2 Clemson in the college football playoff, 
He would have three catches for 62 yards and a touchdown, but it didn't lead to any more targets as he only had one catch for 14 yards in their national championship loss to Alabama. On the year, he finished with nine catches for 154 yards and two touchdowns, and it didn't make sense why he wasn't getting a lot of targets. He averaged 17 yards per catch, and Williams was getting extremely frustrated. Yes, the Ohio State wide receiver room was absolutely loaded, but it didn't seem fair. Jamison would have a decision to make. He had no problem contributing to team success, as Ohio State was doing really well, but he said he saw his own NFL aspirations fading away. It looked like his NFL and his pro career potential were falling apart. His father said, quote, when we started this venture, part of the plan was to get his degree, and he also wanted to be a first round pick. We started looking around, and yeah, he was in the starting lineup, but he's only thrown the ball 13 times all year. Then, when you look at your other teammates, they're getting over 50 balls their way. This was extremely frustrating for Jamison, and following Ohio State spring camp, he got even more frustrated, as it seemed sophomore Jackson Smith and Jigba had taken his spot. He decided to make a decision, and entered the transfer portal. While many thought he could potentially go home and play for Missouri, another big time coach had his eye on him. It was Nick Saban. He called Jamison and told him that he wanted him to come play for Alabama. His pitch revolved around the need for more wide receivers and experience. Alabama had just lost two guys to the first round of the 2021 NFL Draft, and despite adding four top 100 wide receivers and having a multitude of guys on the bench, Saban thought they were short of their usual horsepower, and he knew Jamison could come in and take over the role that Jalen Waddell had. It really wasn't a question from that point, and Jamison decided to bring his talents to Alabama. Saban really loved his speed and footwork, and immediately, Williams would go to work, trying to prove he could fit in at Alabama, and that he could still be a first-round pick in the future. Alabama doesn't typically get a lot of transfers, but Williams has been a factor early on. In their first game against number 14, Miami, Williams caught four passes for 126 yards and a touchdown, and he had the best play of the night. Bryce Young threw a deep ball to Williams, and he went 94 yards and tiptoed down the sideline as he ran in for his first career touchdown in the tied uniform. He followed that up the next week with a touchdown against Mercer, and in last weekend's win over number 11, Florida, he caught four passes for 61 yards. His best performance of the year came this past weekend against Southern Miss, where he had two special teams touchdowns, and the one time he caught a pass, he also brought it to the end zone. He has been the X factor for this Alabama offense, and as they get deeper into this SEC schedule, I expect him to make a tremendous impact. So far, Williams has been the best wide receiver on the team, and him and John Mechie are both trying to become first round picks. Jamison Williams has saved his career. While he was once compared to Ted Ginn and broke records of former Buckeye legend Ezekiel Elliott, his time just didn't work out in Columbus and he needed a change of scenery. It looks like he is saving his career at Alabama, and in my opinion, he has all the potential in the world to be a first round pick. Saban and the Tide have put four first round wide receivers into the last two drafts, and with Jamison's production so far, his speed, and his overall work ethic, I see no reason why Williams can't be number five. As a Mizzou fan, I follow St. Louis recruiting religiously, and I really like Jamison coming out of high school, and I'm really happy to see he's doing super well at Alabama. What do you guys think, though? If you're an Alabama fan, just how good is Williams? Who is another player I could take a look at next? And why do you think he didn't play a whole lot at Ohio State? Be sure to let me know down in the comment section. Hit that like button if you want to support today's video. Subscribe if you're new here, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.